Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the method that I use for nanocoding plates, coils of uh, all types. And in this demonstration, we are nanocoding uh, both zinc, zinc plates, zinc coils, and also a few copper coils. Now, all the instructions for doing the caustic nanocoding can be found in the KF Wiki website. It has a very, very thorough tutorial. And the purpose of uh, this demonstration here is to give you some of the tips that, um, uh, techniques that I use uh, in order to do my nano coating. So before we start, I just wanna go through the, some of the safety uh, requirements here. Make sure before you uh, do any fire coating or nano uh, coating with caustic, uh, make sure you have the proper safety gear and here of course we have safety goggles uh, we have gloves these are heat uh, protective uh, gloves great for doing uh, working with nano uh, um, coating with caustic uh, I have a face mask and uh, that is basically the uh, safety gear um, some of the uh, props that I use, uh, good logbook, make sure that you keep very thorough records of what you do, temperature, the amount of time that you're uh, allowing the uh, nano coating process. Uh, make sure you record as much detail because that's very, very important when you have to repeat it. Uh, I'm just gonna go through the list of the equipment that I have here. I have a little thermometer here for uh, measuring the temperature of my um, caustic solution measuring beakers various sizes and of course we have the sodium hydroxide crystals and also potassium hydroxide you don't have to use potassium but if you do have it uh, you you uh, you are encouraged to uh, to use it to make use of it so what I did basically here I've already prepared this last night and it's been sitting here for about 24 hours. But I'm just gonna go through the steps uh, so you know exactly how I got to where I am right now. And then after I'm finished, I'm gonna show you how I do the spraying. The spraying process, what it does, it helps build more layers. So after the first uh, uh, caustic steam, you're more than welcome to repeat it as many times as you wish. However, you can also do the spraying as well. You can spray the, the, the uh, plates and the coils with the caustic, and that'll also help build the layers. And as you can see, I've prepared a little bottle here of the uh, solution. 5% is what I use. Uh, and this gets divided into 4% sodium hydroxide and 1% potassium hydroxide. If you don't have potassium, that's fine. Just use uh, sodium, 4%, uh, 5% will be fine. It'll, it'll get the job done. So I'm just gonna show very, very briefly uh, the whole process. So uh, we begin first and foremost, um, we measure the quantities of the caustic that we need, and then we place the dry powder right in the container. The container has to be dry, no water in there, all right? so. The proper way to do this is you add the water to the caustic and not the caustic to the water. Because if you add the water first and then the caustic second, it'll splatter all over and you don't want that. So always put the dry caustic first, make sure the container is dry, and then place your coils, everything's ready to go, and then you can cover it and then pour the uh, hot water. So basically uh, the powder was in there I prepared some water and then I poured the water right onto the uh, caustic. And uh, I'm just gonna show you here how I did it. I put a funnel and then I just poured the water right in. Now when you're doing this, you have to realize that this pressure is gonna build up and that pressure is one going to escape. And the quickest way for it to escape is through this little hole. And when that happens, it'll splatter. All that pressure basically rising up at high speed is gonna force your uh, water, that liquid, any liquid that you're pouring in here, it's just gonna bubble right out, right, right in your face. 
So you don't want that to happen. And for safety, what you can do is just lift the cover. Here I have the cover that basically it's like a little hinge cover. It's very convenient. You don't have to have a hinge. You just slide the cover slightly to uh, allow uh, the steam to come out. And that way you're not going to get any splashing in your face, all right? Now this has been sitting um, here for about 24 hours. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to open it and show you the nano coating to see what it looks like. So before doing that, I'm going to wear my safety equipment, my, my mask and my goggles. Okay, now I'm going to put the gloves on. These are not very tactile gloves, so once you put them on, gripping and handling things is, uh, is not as easy, but they're a whole lot easier than some of the other ones that don't have the uh, separations or the fingers. They're like mittens. Those are hard to work with. All right, let's uh, open it up here. Take the cover off. And here we have a beautiful creation here. I'm just gonna bring it closer to you for you to see. As you can see, the copper coils have already started to turn black. This is uh, after 24 hours. And you can see also the zinc plate and the zinc coils have turned into a dull grayish luster. So these were pretty shiny when they went in and now they're dull gray, which means they have nano coating, all right? So this is the first uh, caustic steam after 24 hours. And then what we can do, we can go ahead and start spraying. Now this spray, is warm all right and what i do also is i like to put everything on a warm mat you see this mat here this is a seedling mat for for seedlings you can use a warm blanket um, as well an electric blanket to keep everything warm uh, i'm able to get around 39 degrees celsius using this mat uh, you may be able to get something uh, warmer something maybe uh, cooler it doesn't really matter but as long as the temperature is over 25 28 degrees uh, this thing is going to, the, the process is going to work much faster for you, all right? I also have a little thing underneath here to prevent any liquid from damaging the surface. And of course, it's a Frisbee or a flying disc. Flying discs are optional here. All right, so everything's ready to go. Grab my caustic. The caustic is almost the same temperature, 39 degrees as this. You don't want to use cold caustic because that's going to shock the uh, nano layers. You don't want to shock them. You don't want to heat them uh, rapidly and you don't want to cool them rapidly. So that's why I try to maintain the same temperature. All right, here we go. Ready, aim, fire. Well, that didn't work. I think I should turn it on. There we go. Spray away. I just gently spray it, turn it the other way, so both sides are done, 
spray away. I can actually smell it. It's really, really strong. The caustic is very, very strong. All right, we're done. Now I'm gonna leave it here for another few hours and then repeat the process. And then gradually you'll notice it'll get darker and darker and darker. And the reason I know this works is because when I did it with using uh, copper coils, the, um, the nano layers would um, actually thicken and it'll get darker and darker and darker. Each time I would spray, it would get darker and darker. When the whole process was completed, when, when I took them out, I washed them with distilled water, I could not get the nano coating off. That's how incredibly hit, thick it was. So you actually had to use a knife to, to get the nano coating off. That's how uh, durable it was. And that, that really impressed me. Uh, with fire coating, uh, the nano coating layer comes off just by handling it. It just com peels right off. I've never been successful in, um, in, in able, uh, being able to retain the nano co coating after handling it with my hands. With this, I couldn't take it off. I actually had to use a knife to scrape it off. So it just shows you how, how um, thick the, the, the coating can get if you, do it, if you do it this way. All right, well, that's the end of the tutorial. Thank you for listening and uh, good luck and remember safety.